Hey everybody, this is Doug with another video for Device Patients. This video is about post-implant care instructions, what you should do after an implant or a device replacement. Please remember, I'm not a medical professional giving medical advice. I'm just some guy on the internet. So talk to your doctor and your discharge nurse about your post-implant care instructions and follow what they say. Thanks. All right, let's talk about post-implant care instructions. Now, first of all, the instructions vary quite a bit from doctor to doctor and clinic to clinic. So you should absolutely listen to your doctor and your discharge nurse, follow their instructions, listen to what they say and follow those instructions. What I'm talking about are some of the more common instructions that we hear. Um, first off, one of the big ones is uh, don't get the incision site wet for up to 10 days. Uh, really, they just want you to give time for the incision to heal so that you don't pull the skin apart. So uh, if you were uh, want to bathe, you can take a bath, just don't get that wet. Uh, what I would do is I would tape um, plastic on top of my device and then I could shower. I had the shower hitting my back and that way I could shower without a problem, uh, but need to keep the incision dry for seven to ten days. The other two big instructions have to do with, um, you know, giving your body time to heal. Uh, the first big one that we hear is don't lift anything with your implant side hand over 10 pounds. Kind of a point of reference, a gallon of milk is nine pounds. So let's say a gallon of milk. Don't lift anything heavier than a gallon of milk with your implant side hand. And really that has to do with when you lift something heavy, your muscles in your chest kind of strain a little bit and they don't, again, don't want you to rip your incision apart because that's bad. So uh, with your implant side arm, don't lift anything over 10 pounds for six to eight weeks. You can lift things with your opposite side. That's okay. Uh, take it easy because you just had surgery, but uh, you can lift things with your other side. Just uh, don't go too heavy. The other big instruction that we hear is don't stretch. Uh, don't put your hand above your head. And this is the one that, that causes a lot of confusion. They don't mean don't put your hand above your head, like I can't scratch the top of my head or I can't wash my hair. They don't mean that. What they really mean is they don't want you to like, you know, grab for things on the top shelf. They don't want you to reach up over the stove to grab the sugar. Uh, and the reason for that is because when they put leads into your body, this is a pacing lead. When they put the leads into your body and they implant it into your heart, one of the things they have on the leads here is a suturing sleeve. And what they'll do is they'll uh, insert the lead into your heart and get it where it's going. And then they'll take this suturing sleeve, move it into the right position, and they'll sew it down to your muscle. And this holds the lead in place. And there'll be a little bit of slack here in the lead leading down to your heart. But what they don't want you to do then is then to stretch really far because that tends to tighten the lead. And it has a possibility, not a great possibility, but a small possibility of pulling that lead out of your heart. Uh, it's not a permanent thing. They only say do that for about, you know, don't lift your, your uh, elbow up above your shoulder for about um, six to eight weeks. That's kind of the guideline, your elbow above your shoulder. Don't, don't lift higher than that. Um, they say about six to eight weeks because what happens when a lead is implanted in your body and it happens with the device as well is that your body tries to attack it and destroy it. And when it realizes it can't destroy it, what it will do is it will encapsulate it in kind of a scar tissue. And that scar tissue travels all the way down the lead to the tip of the lead, right where the tip touches your heart. And that scar tissue is what really anchors the lead into your heart wall. It takes about six weeks, maybe eight, to form that scar tissue. And once that happens, that lead is really gonna be very strong in your heart wall. It's gonna take a lot to dislodge it. Um, so that's why they say about six to eight weeks. Now, again, the whole uh, description about your hand above your head, it's really, don't, don't pull your elbow above your shoulder. That means you can shower you can once your your seven to ten day period is is passed you can get in the shower and you can scrub your head uh, you just don't want to reach for the shampoo if it's up on a top shelf uh, if you do do it with your other hand do it with your opposite side uh, what about what happens if you wake up from sleep and you find your arm above your head now that happened to me where i woke up i like to sleep like this and i found my hand behind my head what should i do um, first of all take it down because you don't want to put your elbow up above your head. But second, don't panic. Uh, it's really unlikely that you're going to dislodge a lead. But second, if you did dislodge a lead, your device will pick up on that. It does measurements of uh, lead impedance and resistance. And if it notices a huge change, which is what would happen if you dislodged a lead, it will trigger an alert. 
that will contact your doctor's office and they will call you and say, hey, we just saw a big change in your numbers, but we'd like to have you come in and take a look at that. And they would then discover uh, if you had a, a problem with a lead dislodgement. Now, some doctors and hospitals will send you home with a sling. They'll put your arm in a sling to kind of remind you not to put that elbow above your shoulder, reach up above, above your head for things. So they have you wear a sling as you're leaving the hospital. And they maybe even tell you to wear it for a little while. Um, and then uh, some patients I've heard rec have given a recommendation of when you're sleeping to avoid that problem where I woke up with my hand behind my head. This would have been helpful if I had known it then. But of sleeping in a t-shirt and pulling your arm inside the t-shirt so that when you try to put your arm above your head, you're, you're, you're caught by the t-shirt. That's a good one. Uh, what I do want to caution against is you don't want to leave your arm in that sling for six to eight weeks. You do want to continue using your arm. You do want to move it around. Uh, again, not don't lift things over 10 pounds with that implant side, don't reach for things on the top shelf, but you do want to continue to move your arm around and your elbow because you don't want your elbow or your shoulder to freeze. Uh, there's something called atrophy. It's where the muscles kind of, uh, you stop using the muscles and they freeze in place. Now, I had this problem after I broke my arm in 2003. Uh, I ended up where my elbow wouldn't straighten beyond this point. I went through uh, probably about eight months of physical therapy to get my elbow to straighten out again. It was very painful, and I would hate to see anybody else go through that. So yes, you can wear a sling to remind you that you shouldn't be lifting heavy things or lifting up above your head, but don't stop using your shoulder and your elbow. You do want to continue moving those around so that you don't develop that, that problem with the muscles freezing in place, uh, and then, then you have to go through physical therapy to fix it. So uh, one thing I almost forgot, these instructions about not lifting heavy things, things over 10 pounds, uh, not stretching above your head for six to eight weeks, those really apply for new lead implants. So if you're a brand new patient, you get a device and some leads, these are the instructions you want to follow. If after 10 or 12 years you get a replacement device, but they're not replacing the leads, they're not really concerned so much about you stretching or lifting uh, really heavy things you know, six to eight weeks out. Of course, they don't want you to split that incision open right away, so a few weeks of not lifting heavy things would be a good idea. But the stretching requirement isn't really an issue because that lead is already secured into the heart wall. They're not, they're not worried about you pulling that lead out by stretching up above your head. So if you get a replacement device and they do not add any new leads, you're really you're not restricted by uh, you know lifting up over your head, uh, putting your head behind your 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 hand behind your head at all. Uh, but if you do get a new lead, you go back to the beginning and you have to do the six to eight weeks healing time because that new lead needs time to heal in your heart. So keep that in mind. I uh, hope that all this information is helpful to you. Uh, remember uh, the main rules are don't shower or don't get the incision wet for seven to ten days. Don't lift anything with your implant side arm over 10 pounds for six to eight weeks. And uh, don't put your shoulder above or your elbow above your shoulder to reach for anything for six to eight weeks to give your body time to heal and give those leads time to heal in place. So I hope that information is helpful. Thanks for watching and have a great day.